Mountain have been around for a little while now and they've put out some pretty decent keyboards. The Everest Max with its modular design definitely stood out from the crowd and Andy seemed to like it when he checked it out on the channel back in 2020. Well now Mountain are back with these. This is the display pad and macro pad at the bottom. They describe them on their website as streaming and content creation controllers. You can use these either as standalone devices or as modular add-ons for the Everest Max that I mentioned a second ago and the Everest Core keyboards. They look pretty cool to be fair, but let's dive in and check them out in more detail and find out if they're any good. Hey guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Kit Guru and welcome to my review of the display pad and macro pad from Mountain. Now, the display pad is going up against some very tough competition in the form of the insanely popular Elgato Stream Deck, but at a lower price point with the display pad retailing for £99.99p and the simpler macro pad having a recommended retail price of £49.99p. This is great news for streamers and for anyone who likes adding a bit of functionality to their desk. It's about time we had a little bit more choice. But for the display pad to be a true contender to the Stream Deck, it's gotta perform. Both of these devices come in really great packaging, just like the Everest keyboard. Mountain have really got their packaging game dialed in. The boxes are solid, sturdy, and open up from the front with a magnetic flap holding them shut. Then on the inside, the products are held in place by some really good quality foam inserts. They'd have to go through quite a bit to pick up any damage when they were being delivered and stuff like that. I know some of you out there won't be too bothered by what sort of packaging a product comes in, but I personally really appreciate when a company puts some effort into protecting and presenting your purchase like this. Immediately after taking both the display pad and the macro pad out of the boxes, it becomes obvious that these things are extremely well made. The stands, which are exactly the same for both the display pad and the macro pad, weigh 407 grams on their own and they feel absolutely rock solid. They're heavy, sturdy, and they do their job really well. They're covered with non-slip rubber on the bottom and they sit firmly in place when on a desk. They don't move at all. Now, while these stands are extremely good quality, that's not the only way of using both of these products. You can also mount them directly to the top of the mounting Everest Max and Everest Core keyboards. This is a really nice feature and while it does make the already modular keyboard even more customizable, I was a little disappointed that it's only the mounting that is handled by the keyboard and the display pad and the macro pad will still need to be connected to your PC independently. It would have been nice if they'd connected through the keyboard in the same way as the media control dock does. There are two available USB-C ports on top of the keyboard after all. Now let's have a look at the key differences between the display pad and the macro pad. The macro pad houses 12 fully mechanical, hot swappable RGB backlit keys. They use Mountain's own tactile 55 switches, which feel quite satisfying and solid when being pressed. And what's more, as I mentioned, the macro pad has a hot swappable PCB design, so you are free to change the switches if you want to. The display pad takes the customization up a level and it's got 12 104 by 104 pixel display keys, similar to the Stream Deck that I mentioned at the start of the video. The buttons are plastic and they have a tactile click to them. They feel really nice, and if I'm being completely honest, I prefer them to the feel of the buttons on the Stream Deck Mark I that I've, I currently use to control my streams and stuff. The buttons on both of the controllers sit on top of a brushed aluminium backplate, which looks and feels really premium. I was really pleased to see this level of quality, especially on the cheaper macro pad. Overall, I've been really impressed by the build quality on both of these devices. I've only had them with me for a few weeks, so it's yet to be seen how they'll fare over the long term, but my initial impressions were really, really good. They're both solid. The design is quite simplistic, 
which I really like too. They fit in with my mostly black setup really nicely and they look quite sleek and quite modern. The ability to use them as add-ons for the Everest Max and Everest Core keyboards is a nice touch, even if it only goes as far as mounting and not full connectivity. So let's talk about the features and the integrations. And this is the really important part of the review for these products in my opinion. The software functionality and utilities and just what these things can do in general will make or break them. And all of the customization and setup for both of the devices is carried out in Mountain's Basecamp software, which has been okay since I started using it. There are only very minor differences in the menus for the two devices, which I'll cover briefly before we look in more depth at setting up the keys to control stuff on your computer. As I mentioned earlier, the macro pad features RGB backlighting on each of the keys, so there's obviously a lighting tab that can be found within Basecamp. The naming of the software is pretty cool, the more I say it, head into Basecamp. On that lighting tab, you'll find a few different presets which can be applied, and also an option for full custom control of the colours and effects on a per key basis. The lighting is pretty good. If you've used an Everest Max keyboard before, then it's exactly the same quality RGB here with the same available effects and customization. It's overall pretty good. Now head into the customization for the buttons on the display pad and you'll find options for setting the images or icons for each button. There are a small selection of default icons as well as icons for stuff like OBS, Twitch, Adobe software and then DaVinci. You can upload your own custom icons if you want to and GIFs do work but I had some issues with applying labels over the top of them. They change to a static image when a label is applied. I checked with Mountain on this and it's something that they're going to hopefully fix in a future update to Basecamp. So now we'll talk about the most important features of both the macro pad and the display pad. What exactly can the keys be set up to do? I'm going to jump into this section of the review using the display pad exclusively as it can do everything that the macro pad can do and then more. If I talk about a feature that's only available on the display pad, I'll let you know. Setting up both of the devices within Basecamp is quite easy to do. Clicking into the key binding menu presents you with a visual layout of the device and it's just a case of selecting which button you'd like to configure, then selecting a function from the drop down box. First off, when setting up the display pad, it has the ability to create folders for nesting different collections of buttons and functions within each other, which is not available on the macro pad. Navigating through folders can sometimes feel a bit slow when actually pressing the buttons on the display pad, which I hope is something that Mountain can improve with updates in the future. There are a variety of OS command options available on both devices, such as running Task Manager or putting your computer to sleep. The options included right now are nice, but I'd definitely like to see this expanded on with more stuff like screen grabs or showing the desktop or killing a task, etc, etc. This could be achieved through using macros though, so it's not a big deal. There are simple functions for opening a browser and navigating to a specified URL and opening a specific program or folder, which they do work nice and fast. Obviously your system and the program you're trying to open will also be a factor with that though. You can set up custom macros in the macro section of Basecamp and then you can assign them or any combination of keyboard inputs to a button. This is really useful for using custom hotkeys in programs like Adobe or OBS. You can even assign mouse inputs to buttons, which isn't something I'd ever do, I don't think but being able to map the scroll wheel to buttons may be useful for zooming in and out when doing design work and such stuff like that. Multiple profiles are also supported on both devices and you can change them with the buttons too. This is great for setting up one profile for work and another one for gaming or streaming. You can also link profiles to specific pieces of software. So for example, if you launch OBS, then your streaming profile can become active. That's a nice little quality of life feature that will ensure you've always got the right selection of buttons available at the right time. Next up are a couple of functions that are exclusive to the display pad, clock and PC info. These allow you to add info to the display which show the time obviously with the clock and then also PC stats like CPU and GPU usage. I'd love to see this fleshed out a bit more. Temperatures would be a really nice addition if they can work that into the Basecamp software. 
Now let's get down to the nitty gritty of the list of functions, the integrations with software. Currently there's integrations for OBS, Adobe, DaVinci Resolve, and then you've got Twitch, which at the time of this video is only available on the display pad, but it is coming to the macro pad soon. I set up the display pad and I tried to mimic my current Stream Deck setup, which I use to control everything when I'm streaming. I managed to get some of the way there, but there's quite a bit I just couldn't do. Like multi-actions, for example, the ability to chain a list of functions together and then plonk them all on a single button. This is something that the display pad needs. It just, bottom line, it needs it. If it's ever gonna compete and go toe to toe with the Stream Deck, it needs multi-actions and it is gonna get multi-actions. I asked Mountain and they confirmed that this is in the pipeline. Third party support for plugins is also a massive thing that needs to be added in my opinion. The Stream Deck really shines with plugins installed and the display pad again needs to have this feature to allow the software and the ecosystem to grow and hopefully cater to the needs of anyone who picks up a display pad or a macro pad. My overall experience with the software has been that it's a very good start, but it needs time to develop. The addition of the two features I just mentioned, multi-actions and third-party plugins, should be absolutely at the top of the to-do list for Mountain right now. Early signs are promising though. There have been multiple updates to Basecamp just in the few weeks that I've had the devices for review, with Twitch support being added in the latest release. If Mountain keeps going at this pace, then they'll be very much on the right track to pushing these products to their full potential, which in my opinion is just as high as the Stream Decks. So my final thoughts on these two devices, I've been quite impressed with both the Display Pad and the Macro Pad since receiving them a few weeks ago. The build quality is absolutely top notch and I was genuinely shocked at just how sturdy and solid they feel when I first took them out of their boxes. The software, is quite clearly in its infancy, which is understandable, and it needs to be a top priority for mounting going forward. The foundations are in place for a solid experience if more functionality and plugin support is added. I've placed so much emphasis on how fast they can get this done, as right now the display pad is competing with the Stream Deck, which already has all of the stuff that I've mentioned, and it isn't that much more expensive when it goes on sale. My recommendation is based on how the development goes going forward. If it's executed right, these products will be an absolute bargain and will be a real option for streamers, content creators, or anyone else looking to increase productivity, or as I said at the start of the video, add some functionality to their desk. But if the development slows down or goes a bit stale, then I will genuinely be disappointed because I think it will lead to these two products not reaching the heights that they could and the potential that they could. If the software is developed with these products, these could be real, real competitors to the Stream Deck. They're good quality. The software foundations are there. Keep going, Mountain. These are good products. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked the video. Please leave a like down below if you did. Subscribe to KitGuru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. And if you want to check out links for Patreon to provide us extra support, that'll be in the description. And there'll also be a link to check out our Kit Guru merch, like this t-shirt that I've been wearing now. Anyway, guys, I've been Matt. These have been the Mountain Display Pad and Macro Pad. I'll speak to you in the next one. Look after yourselves. See you later.